Hey. hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about joy. And about how some of the most epic parties ever have been thrown by God. Let's go! Hey, I'm Carter. Oh, uh, and I'm Zeke. Today we're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. You know, instead of being glued to your phone screen. Hey, I happen to be reading about something God made. What's that? Laughter. <laughs> what about it? Laughter's the best medicine. Not antibiotics? No, seriously. Laughter helps you breathe in more oxygen and increases the endorphins released by your brain. Endorphins, right. The chemicals that make you feel happy. See, laughter is like taking a vitamin for the soul. Yeah, but you can choose to take a vitamin. Laughing just, you know, that happens. Well, this says when you make yourself laugh, a real laugh will happen. Okay. This isn't working. I don't feel healthy, I just feel kind of silly. Maybe we need to laugh harder. Ah, that's it. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a bust. Oh, I know a knock knock joke. Okay. Say knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? I don't know. Ah, huh? huh? uh, you got. It. Oh, you were supposed to laugh. It, it's funny. We are totally unfunny today. Uh, I never thought it'd be this hard to find some LOLs. Wait a minute. Are you saying that finding some laughs is a challenge? Oh, you are on. Let's do it. 
Welcome to the LOL Challenge! Great. Okay, how do we do this? You have one minute to take turns making each other laugh. Most LOLs achieved wins. Go! What? Okay, right now? <laughs> now say it! <laughs> What? Show me checker, say it! <laughs> Yo, this is all over. Stop it. No, wait, it's way too much. Stop. No, you, you get it all. <laughs> I feel healthier already. Yeah, gotta make a habit of laughing more. Speaking of habits, it's time for... The story before the story. Today we're starting out in Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Old Testament. In the beginning, God created a beautiful, incredible world. But people turned away from God and the world was broken. Even then, God had a plan to restore us to relationship. God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the whole world through his family. That family, the Israelites, grew in number. They were enslaved in Egypt, but God had led them to freedom. In the wilderness, God gave them laws to keep them safe and connected to God. Before God's people finally entered the land God had promised, their leader, Moses, reminded them of everything God had spoken. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian, and I need you to hold on to your seats because we are going to cover a lot of ground today. After 40 long years in the wilderness, the Israelites were about to enter the land God had promised to them. Moses spoke to the people. Remember that God told us, I have given you all this land. Now Moses knew how easy it is to forget. He knew that in the new land, God's people would be surrounded by nations who didn't necessarily follow God's ways. So Moses took time to remind the Israelites of the main things God had said and done over the last 40 years. In fact, this speech of his is most of the book of Deuteronomy. Listen to the rules and laws I'm going to teach you. Obey them and you will live. <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty serious, huh? And it was, except that God never meant for us to be serious all the time. In fact, God actually told the Israelites to plan big parties throughout the year. Seriously, these celebrations were to be reminders of all that God had done for them, including a special festival at harvest time each year. Gather the grain from your threshing floors, take the fresh wine from your wine presses, then celebrate the Feast of Booths for seven days. Be filled with joy and honor the Lord your God. The Lord will bless you in everything you do, and you will be full of joy. I've got a question for you. What's the longest party that you've ever been to? Maybe you've had a birthday party that was like an all-day adventure. But God told the people to celebrate for seven whole days, an entire week. See, it's easy to get busy and forget about the amazing things God has done. So God told the Israelites to get in the habit of pausing, to look around and see God's goodness and to share it with each other. God knew that it would bring them life-giving joy. As we travel through God's story recorded in the Bible, we discovered that the Israelites didn't always keep these feasts, but every time they did, it helped them remember all that God had done. In the time of Solomon, the third king of Israel, the entire nation gathered together to celebrate the Feast of Booths by taking the Ark of the Covenant into the newly built temple. Lord, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You keep the covenant you made with us. You show us your love. You do that when we follow you with all our hearts. Now in this case, the people celebrated for two 
whole weeks. Because they remembered all that God had done for them, their hearts were full of joy. After Solomon, though, the kingdom split in two. Israel and Judah were led by many kings. A few of these kings were wise and listened to God, but most of them just forgot about God. And eventually the kingdoms were attacked. The people were scattered or captured and taken to foreign lands. But at long last, a group of people were allowed to return to their homeland. After the wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt, the people gathered together to hear the priest Ezra read aloud from God's laws for the first time in many years. Praise the Lord. He is the great God. Amen. 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 The people quickly realized that they had been ignoring God's laws. They were so moved that they began to weep. But Ezra told them, This day is set apart to honor the Lord your God. So don't weep. Don't be sad. And the governor, Nehemiah, encouraged them. Go and enjoy some good food and sweet drinks. Send some of it to people who don't have any. This day is holy to our Lord. So don't be sad. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. How awesome is that? God's joy can make us strong and be able to face even the most difficult things in life. The Israelites went on to celebrate in a special way. We are to live in special shelters during the Feast of Booths. Go out into the central hill country. Bring back some branches and use them to make booths. For a whole week, the people camped out in these shelters, as they had in the wilderness, and shared joyful meals together. God's people continue to celebrate this feast. In fact, hundreds of years later, when Jesus arrived on the scene, they were still celebrating every single year. On the last day of the festival, Jesus entered the courtyard of the temple to teach. And just as he did so often, Jesus chose to take something old and make it new. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Does anyone believe in me? Then, just as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from inside them. He must be a prophet. Maybe he's the one God has sent to rescue us. The Feast of Booths had always been a joyful time for the Israelites to remember how God provided for their needs. But Jesus took it one step further. Just as God had provided food and water in the wilderness, now God had sent Jesus to offer living water, a way to life forever with God. It was the most joyful news the Israelites had ever received. And it's still the most joyful news that we can celebrate today. The end. Hmm. God wants us to party. How about that? It's easy to think of God's laws as really hard. Or not very exciting. But God actually wants us to spend time celebrating. Exactly. God loves us deeply and made a way for our lives to be filled with joy no matter what we face. So what's our part in the story? Well, if we're going to be honest, a lot of days don't feel very joyful. I mean, there's getting up early and school and chores and arguments with your brother or sister. That's why God actually wants us to get in the habit of pausing to look for joy. By celebrating. And remembering all the good things God has done for us. Yep. You don't even need to build yourself a shelter out of branches and celebrate for a week. To be honest, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. But you can also look for places in your everyday life to celebrate and find joy. Like at dinner time or bedtime. Exactly. I mean, some families take turns sharing one thing that brought them joy during the day. Yeah, like a friend who said something really encouraging when you were sad. Or something crazy your puppy did. Your family could even create some bigger habits each year. If you always go camping for your dad's birthday, use that time to focus on the good things God has given your family. Or if you get to take a special trip to grandma's every summer, take the time in the car to talk about some of your favorite memories. Instead of one more, are we there yet? Well said. I love that God gives us the power to make good habits, like choosing joy. And that joy actually makes us stronger. That is something to celebrate, for sure. Woohoo! See you next time. So here's the thing. Make a habit of choosing joy. Just like you can choose to laugh more. Even when you aren't feeling it. You know what I'm feeling, Carter? Hmm. This is worse than the Yankees. <laughs> what? This is worse than the dentist. I had no idea what you just said. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the story. <sighs> Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time.
You doing that game? What did I get? Yeah, what did I get? What are you doing, Lightning? Iron Man? Yeah, you want to go against Razor or something? I don't know how to face it, right? I think you can get Yeah, 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 do it. Oh, get rid of the thing.